Welcome to episode 2 of Pots and Pans. Today we've got tips and tricks for the LJN Classic TNC Surf designs for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Which commonly seems to be a love it or hate it game, but I've always thought it was a cool high score arcade style game that's far from perfect, but still a pretty unique gem for the system. I never really got the controls down for the skate or die games, and 720 while charming and holding some fond memories for me, trying to land a fucking trick in that game was never something that I ever got down. So this one always stood out to me as one of the best skateboard based games released for the NES. Mind you, there's also surfing, which really makes it stand out, however most don't know how the hell that works, but I'm going to show you how to catch some waves, dudes. But first let's briefly go over the skating levels, because at the end of the day, the third game mode where you combine both the skating and surfing is really the most fun game mode in my opinion. So skating is pretty self-explanatory, but just to refresh, A jumps, B increases your speed, and holding back on the d-pad you'll grab your board so you can jump with the board. This is handy for jumping on rails, off ramps, smashing balls, radio cars, and if you're a dick or just some huge shredder fan, smashing turtles. You can also jump without the board as well. They pretty much just approach the controls like a Mario game and pretty much always hold down the B button a lot of the time, only letting up when I want to speed up. You can also play it forward and position your skater's position towards the front a little more, but you're crashing at things a little easier this way, so generally I'd stay back a bit further. You can also slow down by pressing back to break, which I think is way overlooked in my opinion. So it's essentially a race to the end, standard beat the clock stuff, but you probably want to get some points along the way. Like I mentioned, if you're going full speed, you can miss out on a few things. For instance, the turtles, cars, and balls are very hard to jump on at full speed. You'll just fly right past them. They're worth a thousand points after all. That's why breaking to a medium or slow speed can be beneficial for some styles of play, as again, you can only get these at the slowest speed. Also, people may know the infamous baseball that gets you every time. Again, different speeds may provide different results. Two last things worth noting are the numbers on the bottom of the screen. They represent how close you are to the finish, and the yin yang symbols, which basically represent your life. There's two ways to game over in this mode, run out of time or lose all of these symbols. You lose symbols by falling, but you earn them by staying on your board, doing tricks, not falling, etc. An important aspect though, especially in later longer levels, is you can fill this thing up with yin yang symbols, and then the clock will stop. Now you're free not to worry about time, at least not until you fall. You even earn max bonus points if you get to the end with this maxed out. One last tip I'll mention are the rails, they're worth a thousand points, but on some of these longer rails, instead of just riding it out, you can jump on and off and then back on again to increase your score, if that's your thing. Also, this is not worth any points, but these oil slicks are kinda cool. There's actually two spots on the track where if you're at a medium speed, you can ride them and ollie out of them just at the nick of time. It's pretty risky and stuff, but it's about the most badass you can look on this game. Why isn't this worth any points, you cheap bastards? That I can't fucking believe. Another thing about these oil slicks worth mentioning is you can only get so fast by manual acceleration. However, hitting these oil slicks will really get you flying. Hit up to two and it gets insanely fast. It's pretty fun, but you won't have much room for errors, there's not much time to react. Still, few people ever get to experience going this fast, and it might be a fun challenge for some. The level never changes, it's just like a fucking penis pump. They just keep adding to the beginning till it maxes out. And after a few rounds and as levels increase or start with less yin yang symbols, so on to surfing! It's actually kind of funny, but I can't remember how I used to do this, but yeah, I was in the same majority as a lot of people who played this game back in the day, who often, and for good reason, would come to the conclusion that the controls were simply broken. It's a common complaint. In fact, for many, myself included, we may even have held a grudge against this surfing mode that I don't think could really be applied to many other NES games. It's a special kind of grudge, I mean. Hey, you wanna play Rescue Rangers? Nah. What about Contra? Contra? No. Definitely not Contra. You got something good over there? What about Worm? Journey to the center of the earth. Uh, what else you got? I know where we can play. I'll play TNC Surf Designs? It's T oh! Uh, T TNC Surf? How about... Fuck that game! It's a special kind of grudge. A fuck that game grudge. So hopefully I can remedy some of that, at least to the point where you'd consider giving it another try to reevaluate it. And there we go. Um, yeah, so I'm not a fan of this game. Good luck defending it. So conceptually, I think a good way to think about this is it's not about getting to the end like in the skating mode. It's more like an auto-scroller. The end comes to you. So waiting it out and staying on your board, collecting points, etc is really your only objective. You can see here that the wave behind me is super close to the end, and again, that's because the end comes to you. Eventually, I'll cross the finish line even if I don't want to. So that's the first step. Stop fighting the game. 
Now it's hard for me to say where to start with explaining these controls, but let's start with the B button and jumping waves. So in general, the action buttons on surfing are not about inputs at a specific time. You just hold the fuckers down. So you should be able to get to the top of this wave and do some jumps. Again, just hold the B button down. You get 500 points for landing, but that gets bypassed if you hit a bunch of other stuff while in the air. See, points, and then no points. Now before we get into the secret of this game, the A button, which makes all the shit fall into place and basically playable, let's check the manual. Now if you don't have the manual like none of us did back in the day, that's fine as this was one of those the manual doesn't necessarily help or explain shit type of games. However, there's a clue or reference worth noting. Here it says B button to move the character's balance backwards, which I guess equals jumping, which we just learned. But for the A button it says move the character's balance forward. Hmm. Okay, well fine. So, let me just come out and say this. They fucked up by not telling us to just simply hold the buttons down. So instead, it led us to like, hit the buttons, often rapidly, but often we didn't notice any change. All they had to say was hold the A button down to move your character's balance forward, or hold the B button to move your character balance backwards. Then maybe this whole thing could have been avoided, and we wouldn't have been sitting there, holding our dicks in our hands, wondering, oh, gee, well, what do they mean? Is this a time button execution? Am I supposed to tap these things? How how comes nothing's happening? So yeah, just hold the buttons down. I mean, maybe once you get everything mastered, play around with tapping and releasing buttons. But for learning's sake, all you need to know is simply just hold them down. In fact, unless you want to do a jump over the wave via the B button, always keep the A button held down. Why? Because it moves you forward. And not having this forward momentum engaged is a big reason for falling or getting sucked up. So let's play with this. Now you should notice much more forward acceleration, and you now should be able to go against the current, so to speak, which is what you'll need to stay afloat and in control. Now play with the D-pad directions, up and down, and the opposite direction of the beach even. See if you can get a feel for moving around and doing some maneuvers, like turning around and maybe even riding backwards. Great. Now we're still gonna fall, but that's fine, just get a feel for this. Now next is what I'll call cutting. I don't know surfer lingo, but that's just what I call it. Cutting is based off up and down, like this. Get this motion down. As you can see, you can get massive coverage and speed on the waves. Strangely, this makes sense and you'll start to see what they were going for here. Once you get it down, though, throw forward back into the mix to really gain some ground. So now apply everything previously mentioned like jumps along with this A button down stuff and the various D-pad movements and you should start to get it. The last maneuver to learn is the backside 360s on top of the wave. This takes some getting used to to really find the point where you don't go flying off. I won't explain it too much, just watch how I do it. You can also try just doing 360s in normal waves to get the motion. A more advanced move I do is this big 360 just to reposition myself. It's not worth any points, but it's pretty useful. Regardless, you'll do it much quicker up on top. Once you get a few down, do a bunch back to back. Only your endurance can keep you from the big points now. Another thing worth noting is you don't have this game down to you can beat a handful of levels. What I mean, and it could be my imagination, but I think level 4, or is it 6, I forget, but some levels seem to have a bit more pull to them, at least more than the others. Again, it might be my imagination, but sometimes you can ride straight up into the waves without getting pulled back, and sometimes you can't. I don't know if this is stage dependent or where you're positioned on the wave, but it's something you may notice. Regardless, keep your game face on, and remember to stay on the board best you can, and the end of the stage will come to you. If you're having trouble, remember to cut hard down to get some mileage, or to get to the end a bit faster if you need. Again, and the big 360 thing I mentioned a second ago can be useful if you need to get away from the bottom. So like in skating, the levels get longer after the first handful of stages, but the pull of some of these earlier stages seem to even out and isn't as common for a while. So treat the first 8 stages as sort of a test. If you can make it to like round 10, chances are you've made some progress or may even have this down. Well that's pretty much it, but let me cover some advanced tricks and general strategies. Now according to the manual, we get 100 points for every half second spent in the hazardous pipeline, which is kind of a ripoff, but it's actually fun to play with. So don't fear this wave, it's kind of like playing with fire, but it's fun when you don't get burned. It can also be hard to get the points to register, as again, I guess you need to be in there for a half a second or whatever. You think for something so daring it'd be worth more points, but no. Other things you can do are things like jumping over the bird, which, if you time it right, is a good way to avoid them. You can also kind of pretend to jump over the airplane, which I guess is supposed to be in the background, but it would make for a radical shot. Seriously, that should be worth a thousand points right there, but it's not. Guess it's about style points, dudes. 
Now I believe the plane itself represents some sort of stage progression. In later levels it seemed there would be four planes before the end, but I'm not sure if that's their purpose or if it's just a graphical touch. But anyway, so if you got this down you can finally just start fucking with the game, lasting longer than you need, trying to end the levels by jumping into the end, riding into the end backwards. Speaking of which, riding backwards is another cool maneuver I didn't really mention, but it's pretty intuitive to figure out once you have the rest down. So practice backwards stuff too. You can also go after bananas, start jumping over the birds, see how many rounds you can go, see if you can beat your last high score, hell, maybe you can even max out the point counter. Speaking of which, the final trick, and this is the most important for getting high scores and having longevity in the game. Just like in skating, you'll notice the yin yang symbols are back. You get these for staying on your board and lose them for falling. Now as there's no time limit in surfing, these are important as by later levels you'll start with only two, which means one quick fall and is potentially game over. So the last trick is cutting on top of the wave. Go up to the top much like going for a jump or like when you're doing a 360 trick up here, but instead of rotating the d-pad away from you, just do the up and down cutting motion. When done correctly, you'll get 500 points, however every time you do this trick you instantly get yin yang symbols. If you can do a few back to back, you can quickly max this thing out in no time, and essentially have nothing to worry about. It could actually be argued that this takes a lot of challenge out of the game as you're essentially safe, but you can also rest easy knowing that a fall won't end the game. If this trick isn't working for you, try doing an up to right like 45 degree angle turn. That will work, and then do an up to even lower right type thing. So it might be more of an up to down and a half forward circle movement for some to get this trick, but that's that. After that, there's really nothing else for you to do except for shoot for a high score, or if you're really crazy and serious, try to max out the score counter or make it to level 99 if it goes that far, who knows. In the meantime, experiment with the jumping too. You can attempt to do jumps from lower and even farther back than you might expect, even getting as close to the corner edge here. I also just found this out, but holding both buttons down, you can do this quick short little jump like this. It's pointless, literally, you get no points, but maybe it has its moments. So I hope that helps or explains TNC surf designs, especially the infamous surfing part, which has some famously misunderstood controls. Again, it's gonna take some practice, but I think after an hour or maybe a few sessions, anyone can get this down. So hopefully you learned something you didn't already know, or if you never played the game, maybe you can jump right in without ever experiencing the agony gamers in the past went through on this damn surfing level. So please subscribe for more tips and tricks in the future. Till then, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. And the yin yang symbols, which basically represent your life. Actually, it's concepts used to describe how opposite or contrary forces are actually complementary and indicate a and independent natural world. How they give rise to each other instead they intercreate to make another <clears throat> duality in the natural world and how they give rise to each other and they are inter in 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 inter it to another each other and each other. Shut the fuck up, bitch. I'm trying to review a goddamn game here.